time for women to, you know, the first woman president needs to be elected, but she expects everyone to just forget about Bill Clinton's sexual assault or sexual harassment. But here's the other thing, because I know when uh, all of these allegations against Bill Cosby first started to surface, people were really rightly angry with the media because they were like, you guys covered this up for all of these years. And he just continued to make millions of dollars for all of these decades. He continued to assault these women because the media, they never believed them. And so it, you were, you know, they were upset about the fact that he was like raking in the dough, you know. Somewhat similar America's to uh, Jimmy Savelle. I mean, right. Jimmy Savelle was messing with kids and Bill Cosby was messing with women. Right. Well, let's, Bill, Co uh, Bill Cosby, of course, he could continue to make that money, but so did Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now this is obviously something that we've talked about before with the Clinton Foundation. She said that they were dead broke when they got out of the White House. But of course, since then, they've made like a hundred and something million dollars. Oh, yeah, Bill they Clinton make yeah, speaking fees. Yeah, yeah, they make thousands of dollars to go to these uh, speaking engagements. You're exactly Millions. right. Millions, yeah. And so this is uh, coming out today. This, I believe, is CNN where they're like, Hillary needs to set some, some ethics guidelines. And it's like, oh, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and see if she's going to start setting those guidelines right now. But they point out how while she was a secretary of state, Bill Clinton reportedly earned tens of millions of dollars in speaking fees, uh, including over 16 million in her last year in office. Um, and a lot of those instances, companies had some issues before the State Department. So he's earning money on things while his wife was, you know, deciding if they were going to work together with these companies. So. Well, that's a, a, little very, pay, a little pay to play. A very powerful report. Thank you, Leanne. Now, coming up, we have an interview, the bombshell interview Alex Jones conducted with Cy Hirsch. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, and he's been documenting how the Pentagon is refusing to back Obama's orders, the very unconstitutional ones, to support ISIS. That's coming up next, and you do not want to miss it. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> He joins us now. Mr. Hirsch, thank you for coming on. The big issue is the question, one of the big questions is, uh, we've demonized Bashar Assad. He's, he's a dictator, no question. Uh, you cross him, he'll cross you. He's a lot better than his father, the old man Assad, you know, uh, Hafez Assad. He, he was uh, trained to be, he was the second or third son, never thought he'd be president because the older boys had the past. Uh, went to medical school, was an ophthalmologist, married a, a very second generation uh, Iraqi woman who worked for uh, one of the national, you know, investment houses, uh, American investment houses in London. And so he was, not, all of a sudden there he's called upon, his older brother dies and his father says, you, you better get a couple years of army training and get ready. So he's, 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 he, look, he's hated in America. I don't think you can get five votes for him in Congress. He's demonized, he's as, as killed, there's about 250,000 deaths. But he's, he's a lot demonized. better than Al-Qaeda. Well, you know something, and ISIS, and also, things have, I, I watched him for six, eight, ten years. I went back and forth there. I've been going there to the Middle East a lot since 9-11. And he's, you know, he got much more open. You could, you, know, you could bank there. You could have the, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, go to an ATM machine. Uh, there were 30 different foreign broadcasts on TV. It was, he was opening. Yes, when you cross him, he's going to fight you to the end. It's a war to the end. He's fighting um, uh, ISIS. He's fighting al-Qaeda. He's fighting al-Nusra. These are people that hang and, and garage some of the horrible stuff that happened. He's had as many as 200 of his soldiers executed at one sitting by these people. So it's a war in which he's killed a lot and they've killed a lot. And it's a war to the end. Uh, and and he's uh, the, what I wrote about in part was that the, our joint chiefs um, decided some years ago on the basis of intelligence reporting that there really wasn't any option, that there really were no moderates. Although we, the, the White House keeps on talking about there are moderate groups in the opposition. There were at one time, but they were quickly taken over and cleaned out by the more radical jihadist you know, people who believe in Sharia law. Uh, some of the groups we advocate uh, as moderate uh, have already made it clear that if they ever took over the government, no Christians or Alawites, that's a, a minority sect, Shia sect that uh, Bashar Assad and about 12 percent of the uh, of the people living in Syria belong to, none of them could be in, could be allowed to live in the country. They were talking about genocidal, you know, uh, uh, genocidal cleaning, it's the cleansing, if you will, of a society. That's those are the moderate groups. So there, there you are. Um, so the option was the Joint Chiefs looking at the intelligence, looking at the fact that we had been supporting for years covertly. Uh, this is through the CIA, David Petraeus. I, I would argue that Hillary Clinton surely should have been aware of this. She was Secretary of State. We began, to, after after uh, Libya fell, we began to funnel stuff that, um, in an earlier article I called the rat line, um, a lot of arms from Libya into Turkey. And from Turkey, uh, the uh, the gentleman running Turkey, Erdogan, is a, is a total, complete supporter of ISIS. I don't think there's any question of that, even though we deny that, our intelligence social. So I, what I wrote about is the fact that, that two and a half years ago, the Joint Chiefs decided, well, 
they can't convince the White House uh, and the State Department with intelligence. They're just going to begin to do what they can do to try and modify uh, the American policy. It'll make it less, you know, um, they, nobody wants to talk about directly challenging a president. That's not your job. But I will tell you, at the certain level, at the Joint Chiefs, the level of four-star generals, the oath of office is an oath to the Constitution, not to the president. That's right. And, it, and it's very traditional. Doug, you can go back to Douglas McCarthy. You can go back to World War II fighting. You can go back to terrible fighting in Vietnam. President so Eisenhower, they, as the president, challenged the military-industrial complex there you as go. a system himself, the ultimate level, still a general, saying, I want to challenge the people that want to control our military for their own aims. There you go. There you go. And, and you can even argue that the hatred for McNamara by the time he was ready to get out of there in 67 because he refused to listen to the generals. We've always had generals in opposition. So this isn't new. What they did, though, instead of directly challenging the, the uh, Joint Chiefs, as I wrote about, beginning in the summer of nine, 2013, after a lot of intelligence showed that our path was wrong. We weren't going to win. Uh, if we got rid of Bashar, we were going to have a government a completely full of, of wackos, you know, wing nuts. Uh, a hard line to take off their head, people. Clearly worse. Uh, I, I, I mean, a happens, whole new Afghanistan. Well, there you go. Well, look, Afghanistan's still a mess right now. You know, people always talk. I, I'm a big supporter. I, I, uh, I, I was in the Army. Uh, there's nothing better than America. It's the greatest country to be in. But we do have a lot of freedom. And I will tell you that our, our special operation forces, the Delta Force, uh, the, the SEALs, they're terrific. They're very good at what they do. But they're being miscast. This is we're now in 14 and a half years Absolutely. of a war against an idea, and the Joint Special Operations Command, for all of their ability to go hit a house at night and kill people and take them out, we're not winning that war. Well, you know it's interesting. What they did was because they didn't want to go directly to Bashar Assad because the president had ruled that you know that's that would have been in direct violation. But we did know that the Germans, in particular, the German intelligence service and the German high command, and get this, the Russians and the Israelis, all three had been in contact with Bashar Assad, because all three, even Israel, which sometimes, you know, doesn't always speak what the real policy is, uh, they've got a lot of problems, government problems, leadership problems, but the guys running the military and intelligence system in Israel had the same point of view as our, the guys running our, at least that, that were running our joint chiefs, because the general at the time was General Dempsey. They're saying. Martin Dempsey, who's now retired, is a, is, is a new chairman. And we, we don't know where he stands on this, because publicly he said little. He's only a couple of months into it. Uh, uh, I understand a very competent Marine named Dumford. I just don't know much about him. I know more about Dempsey. And <laughs> Was Dempsey the big hero in this, going to Obama saying? Well, I, you know, he wouldn't look at it that way. He just did something. It, it, the issue was we were going the wrong way. The Germans and the Russians and the Israelis were begging for intelligence. One thing America does, and we do it very well, we have terrific intelligence. We have satellites. We have SIGINT intelligence. We do have people on the ground. You Believe met. me, we can do better, we can do better than, than anybody wants to write about with certain groups. We can penetrate people. We're not, we're not incompetent. But often it's the leadership that gets you in trouble. So they decided that... The Germans in particular were kept on saying, what, what can you do to help us? They, they began in the fall of 9, 2013. We began to shovel stuff that we had about um, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, ISIS. We began to shovel information not only about where they were, but what they were thinking, as much as we learned. And so we enabled uh, uh, Bashar's army, the Syrian army, which right now has probably emerged and has been fighting a tough war for four years. It's emerged as one of the better armies in that area. Um, uh, a hell of a lot better army, for example, in the Iraqi army or anything we have in Afghanistan. So what they did is they did it that way. And that way they were sort of, as somebody in the article I wrote said, you know, um, uh, the, the, you know, we're doing stuff military to military. The president may not have known, but there's a lot of stuff he doesn't know about. So that's the way they got around the issue. And they began to help it and help Bashar. Not only that, it was very much a morale builder for the Syrian army to know that uh, they were getting very high level intelligence. So <coughs> I don't know how history is going to judge this. Um, the, uh, as, as you can gather, stories like this uh, in the mainstream press don't don't get copied. Um, but it doesn't matter because there's the internet. You know, there's guys like you and, and uh, uh, all sorts of other people around the world 
that pay more attention than often the major papers here. You know, I worked for the New York Times for eight or nine years during Watergate. and I won a lot of prizes in Vietnam. And um, 